Hey everybody, my name is Ben Brady and I am the 3D Printing Texan. Today, we're going to do a little bit of uh, interesting work with uh, Design Spark Mechanical. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I've done uh, in the past couple of days uh, that I've been having a little bit of fun with, trying to figure out how to do some things that uh, people wouldn't normally do uh, in, in uh, 3D, 3D modeling program. So uh, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to show you how I made a little uh, tripod eyeglass holder and then uh, also um, how I made uh, my uh, digital caliper holder for my Ender 5. So um, couple of little interesting little tricks that you can use with the uh, design spark mechanical I saw somebody do this with fusion 360 and I figured well let me try it and see if it works and and sure enough it did because design spark mechanical is also a parametric uh, designer uh, uh, 3d modeling program and so uh, I figured well you know the worst thing that could happen is it wouldn't work but actually it, it worked out very well so what we're going to do is we're going to jump in. I'm going to show you a couple of little things here, and uh, we will uh, go from there. So let me switch uh, to the desktop here. And the first thing we're going to look at is uh, my paint program. I use a program called paint.net. Uh, it's a simple program. It does what I want it to do. I am not a graphics artist or by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I just use this tool to get stuff done. So um, I'm going to open this file here in a minute. We're going to share it. And uh, let's see, where did it go? There it is. Now, you should be seeing my desktop with paint.net. Now, what I did to start this project was I took my cell phone. And I took a picture of the tripod that my Microsoft LifeScan uh, uh, camera is sitting on right now taking this video. So it's right here in front of me. And the issue that I had was when I'm working on my desk and I'm trying to do stuff, I'm always having to switch from reading glasses to my magnifying glasses. Uh, right here these kind of like jewelers uh, glasses they have little jewelers loops in them and so I can just put them on but then I don't have any place to put my glasses and I'm always losing them on the desk so uh, what I did was I said you know I need a place to put these glasses and um, why don't I make an eyeglass holder that will clip on to the legs of the tripod because that way it doesn't take up any desk space. It's handy. I know where the glasses are. And so I said, okay, let's see if we can do this. So I took a picture of the tripod sitting there in front of me on the desk. And I measured, A, the diameter of each of the legs, which is 15 millimeters. And I measured the distance. There's a little aluminum uh, discussion where the legs go into at the top of the tripod. So I measured the distance between the outside edges of the escutcheons on each leg that's facing me. And that came out to 52 millimeters. So I said, okay, with those two measurements, I should be able to get pretty darn close to being in the right scale. So I said, okay, I'm going to take a picture. So I took a picture with my cell phone and I loaded it here into paint.net. So let me, let me open that picture real quick here. And uh, let's see, pictures. And let me see if I can uh, get a little bit better display here so I can see what's going on. So this is the picture that I originally took. And then I got in here to paint.net and I took out all of the background features that I could take out. 
And so there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. I did it the hard way because I took my eraser brush here and I made it a certain size. So in this case, uh, we can make it like a 40 and 40 is probably not going to be big enough. Uh, but let's see. No, 40 is not going to be big enough. So, uh, and then uh, let's make it, uh, let's make it 150. There we go. Now we can see what's going on. And so this is the erasure. And uh, now I can, I can follow along the, the contours of the leg this way and wipe out the background. Of course, this is pretty tedious doing it like this. So, but there are other ways that you can do it, but I did it this way. So this way you can, you can erase the background. All right. Now, I ended up with an image that looks like this. Let's see. Like I said, I'm not the greatest artist. I, you know, I color outside the lines in a coloring book, so it's a little ragged but it's serviceable for what I want. Okay, so, so now I have this image, and this is the image I'm going to use. And so like I said, from here over to here is 52 millimeters, and the diameter of the legs is 15 millimeters. So that's, what, that's, that's my project. So now I'm gonna to switch to Design Spark. I'm going to show you how this works. Let's see here. I got to I got to navigate. Come on. Do do do. And let's see. I believe I need to stop sharing. Yeah, that's what it is. All right. That menu is over there. So now uh, I'm going to share Design Spark. I'm going to show you what I did. So we'll go back here to Design Spark. And that's there. Now I'm going to close this other window because it's a little distracting. Uh, don't save it. All right. Now we're over here in the design spark and I said, let's start a new design. And um, so we have our plane, our just our standard sketch plane. So I'm gonna say open a file and I'm gonna open the picture that we just saw in paint.net. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna select pictures picture formats and we're going to pick that format now what i did was when i saved this out from paint.net i saved it out as a png file which is important and i saved it out with with the background being transparent which is key because as you can see with this image being on the sketch plane with a transparent background, you can still see all the grid lines on the plane. So that made a lot of sense to me. So I said, okay, so we're gonna put this here and now it's on the plane. And now we're gonna view the plane uh, and uh, in, in a face up, fashion. So now what we have to do is we have to scale this image to the correct dimensions so that we can use it on the sketch plane. So we know that from here to here is 52 millimeters. So 52 millimeters from here for here's the center. So each one is 25. So it's got to go out to here 25 and out to here 25. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to select that, and we're going to grab the handle, and we're going to use the shift key 
to constrain the scaling so that everything, all the aspect ratio and everything is the same. So, and then we're just going to drag this handle and we're going to make it bigger. We're going to make it much bigger uh, because we need 52. Uh, so we got what we got there now. So there's uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 40 something. So let's go here. 10, 20, 30, 40. And now we're just a little bit too big. So we're going to go, we're going to scooch it down just a little bit. And then we're going to scooch it over just a little bit. And we're going to use one of the guide, one of the thicker guidelines here. So there we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and a little bit more so we're gonna we're gonna scooch it out just to hold down the shift key and we're gonna scooch it just a little bit there and then we're gonna scooch it over just a little bit so now we have here's our here's our measurement point right here and we want uh, there's the there's the main line 10 20 30 40, 50, and here's 52 right here. So that's pretty darn close. Now, so now we have our picture, our image to scale. Okay, that works. And then if we look here, this dimension here for the legs, let's see if we can find a one that's easy to count. Um, it's it's right at about the right dimension for fifteen for fifteen um, millimeters. So this is the right this is the right scale. Now, my supposition was, if I can put this image onto the plane in the right scale, and I can trace. I can draw lines on the legs of the tripod at the right angles. Then as I, when I print whatever I'm going to print, it should be at the right angles to clip onto the tripod. Okay. That made sense. So from here, it's actually fairly straightforward to create an image. Now, what we can do is we can hit D to go back into 3D modeling mode. And if I tilt this, uh, you'll see that we're in 3D mode now. I'm going to go back to the sketch and, and tilt it. And you can see the image is on both sides of the sketch. Okay, now. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw some lines. So you go up here to uh, to the to the uh, to the line tool up here, in the, or you can hit L on the keyboard, and you can start here. Uh, I'm going to move just for the sake of argument. I'm going to move this up just a little bit so I can use this main line as a key. And so, all right. So we're going to go here to the line, and we're going to start here, and we're just going to drag this line down to oh let's say about there and we're and you see we're at an angle and we're perfect we're parallel to to the leg okay and so that's fine and then we're going to go over here and we're going to do the same thing here uh drag this line down here parallel down to the same uh level okay and, and actually, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and select this. And we're going to grab the end of this line, and we're going to extend that back up here, just right to there. So it starts right at the bottom of this aluminum discussion. And so now the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that these lines are the correct distance apart. 
So naturally, there's a bit of tolerance that we have to factor in when we 3D print something to fit on something. And depending on the, the shape of that particular item, it, either if it's a circle or uh, in this case a cylinder or a square, that number for tolerance can change. Okay, so for example, I know with my Ender 5 printer, because I did some tests, uh, that for a circle, if I have a difference of a radius of 0.125 millimeters, that's a radius, not diameter. So it would be 2.5 millimeters on, I mean, 0.25 millimeters on the, on the diameter. That, that is the tolerance from my printer for circles. So, like, for example, if I wanted to make a screw hole or some, some kind of round thing to go into a round hole in a print, I have to make that hole 0.25 larger than the item that I'm going to uh, put into it. So in this case, I want my uh, lines to be 15.250 millimeters apart. So, and, and the reason I'm, there's a reason I'm doing this. Now, um, so this is one way to do it. Now, what we have here is we have a cylinder. So let's, let's deal with the lines first. So we got this line, and we're going to hold down the control key and hit this line. So now we have both lines highlighted. I'm going to jump up here to the measuring caliper on uh, Design Spark. There is no uh, keyboard shortcut. You, just have, you have to click on the icon here. So we click on the icon, and it says that it is... The minimum distance between the objects is 16.763. So they're a little far apart. So we can hit the select button and we can select one of these and move it just a hair closer. So uh, actually we probably wanna move both of them closer. So we're gonna just take that and we're gonna move that like that. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna move that like that. Now that's probably gonna be a little bit too close. But we'll go ahead and hit the, hit the control key and select the other one again and go back here to the measuring tool. And now, like I said, it's too close. It's 14.865. So what we're going to do is we're, we're only going to move one. So we're going to go back here to the select key and uh, we're going to move this one. And then we're going to highlight, we're going to select both of them again and see where we are. So that and that, and then we're going to do our measurement. And now, uh, oops, did I not get the right, that one, and that one, there, now we got it, so now, we are at 15.505, 5092, that's close enough. So now I know I need a cylinder. 15.50 in diameter. Okay? So and that'll be and that'll be perfect. It'll be it'll fit just fine. So what we want to do is go up here to the Design Spark uh, menu item and we're going to choose cylinder. And here we have, uh, uh, it's using our lines as axis, so we're, so we're going to get, get rid of the lines here. Or actually, we can actually use both of these uh, uh, cylinders because it's, it's created two cylinders. So we'll use both of them. We'll just, we'll just move them. So in this case, uh, let's see, wh where is my... Um, Let's see. So we want we want fifteen point five zero. And it doesn't like that because the cylinders are too close together. 
and it does stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to back out there and we're going to back out here. And we are just going to, and we're going to kill off these lines because we know how, we know how, uh, how, actually we're just going to kill off one line. And a matter of fact, I'll move this line out of the way and uh, I will actually use that line. We'll go ahead and leave that selected and we're going to rotate that line. Whoops to be parallel and we're gonna move it. Because we'll just use this as the, the axis for the other cylinder. All right, so now we've moved that line and we're gonna go ahead and go to the select. So now we have a line here and a line here. And so we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and highlight that. And we're gonna use that as the axis for the cylinder. And we're gonna say we need a cylinder that is 15.50 millimeters. So it creates that cylinder, uh, I'm sorry, it created a radius. So we need to back that off. That's, that's the thing that you gotta deal with. So 15.5, so that's gonna be 7.5, 7 and then we have another 0.5, so that's gonna be 7.75 millimeters for the radius. So that's gonna create uh, a cylinder that is uh, large enough. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna highlight that line, hit cylinder, and we're gonna go 7.75 millimeters. So that two cylinders in the right orientation, in the right diameter, okay? So that makes it easy. And then uh, we're going to, uh, clean them up a little bit here. So we're gonna go that guy and we're gonna bring him, we're gonna go ahead and go to the pull tool and we're gonna, go, we're gonna say, bring that up to this guy. And it doesn't, it doesn't like that, it says the operation failed. Okay, fine. So at some point, we'll just go ahead and make these the right length. But at this, at, at this moment in time, what we need to do is we need to move these so that they are the correct uh, distance apart. So in this case, this edge here and this edge here have to be 52, uh, I'm sorry, this edge here, the outside edge, and this edge here have to be 52 millimeters apart. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna highlight, we're gonna hit the move, we're gonna highlight this one, and we're gonna move this one over here to there, and we're gonna highlight this one, and we're gonna move this one this way uh, to there, and uh, we're gonna move this guy up just a hair. Oops, I tilted him. Okay, so now we've got these two uh, cylinder legs. Now let, let's check them and see uh, how tall they are. So in this case, this one and this one, we'll go scoot down here, hit the control key, highlight that, hit the measurement. And so this one here is, uh, the distance between the two faces is 42.05. So in this case, let's see what this one is. This one here, this one here, this one's 37.736, so this one's shorter. So let's just split the difference and make both of these 40. So got to do a little bit of math here. Uh, there's probably a way to do this parametrically, but I just haven't thought about it much yet. So, so this one here should come out just for the heck of it, we'll just say two and a half. And then this one here, uh, we're gonna go that way by two. And so now we should be pretty darn close. So uh, 
there and there and then measure that so that's going to be 40.05 and then we got here and here 40.236 so what we're going to do is we're going to back this one off zero point two three six and we're gonna and we're gonna say this one here was what this one here was forty point oh five nine five so we're gonna go we're gonna back this one off zero point zero five nine five and that's now they're both going to be 40 millimeters long so that one there you can see down here at the screen 40 millimeters and then this one here and that one's 40 millimeters so now they're both the same height now if you look at this uh screen now as we since we're in three-dimensional mode, the image is right through the middle of them, and so that's fine. Now, at this point, we, we really don't need the image anymore. Uh, so we can say, we'll go ahead and square it up, and then uh, go back to uh, 3D move. And we can go over here to the, uh, to the image and just turn that off. And so now we have our, our legs for the tripod. Now, when I took this picture, the tripod wasn't exactly even. That's why they're a little skewed. One's a little crooked. It's because one leg is closed more than the other. That's fine. It, it, it's, they're pretty darn close. They're not quite exactly open. So uh, now what we want to do is we want to go to, you know, we can, let's turn this back on just so we have a place to get a plane and a, a sketch plane. And we're going to go here and here, and um, we want to draw a construction line from here all the way across to here. We, we're going to we're going to use that line. So now we can turn the image off again, and we can kill that construction line. And now uh, we can uh, go back here to 3D design mode, and we are going to move these objects. Uh, come on. I don't want, I hit the F1 key. Uh, so we're going to say select that. So, and then we're going to say we want move and we want to move this object up to that line. And we want, and then we're going to select this other object over here on the other side of the project list, and we're going to move it down to that line. So now both edges are same height, cylinders are the same length, everything is fine. So now we're now we're symmetrical, and um, now we can proceed with creating the actual eyeglass holder now there's a couple of different ways that you can do this and the first way that I tried it was to use the shell command so that I could shell the cylinders okay but the problem with that was I couldn't deal with the bottom of the shell okay so how the shell works is if you highlight one of these cylinders and you tell it shell, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to, it's going to default to one millimeter, as you can see right here. Now, if I say I want a shell thickness of three millimeters, it's going to create a three millimeter shell wall. Okay. One millimeter is a little too thin. Two millimeters is a little too thick. 1.5 millimeters is about right. 
Okay, now that works. But the problem is we have a bottom and that bottom is 1.5 millimeters. And as a shell, this program knows that it's a shell. And if you try to do something with the bottom, like for example, you can't remove the bottom. Now you could punch a hole in it and, and maybe get, we can try that. We'll punch a hole in it and see if we can then make the hole big enough to take the bottom out. It might work. But what I ended up doing was on the face of the, of the, uh, the cylinder, uh, let me go ahead and select this. On the face of the cylinder, I went ahead and I put a sketch plane and I drew a circle that would give me the correct diameter. So we know that this circle uh, is 15.5. And so if we want a 1.5 uh, diameter, we need, a, we need a circle that's 13 millimeters. <coughs> so there's, there's my 13 millimeter circle. Now I can use that to punch a hole all the way through the cylinder. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll, we'll go here and then we'll go back to design mode and uh, we're going to go ahead and go to the pull mode and we're just going to go push right through. So now we have a cylinder with a hole in it. Now let's, let's just try for the sake of argument, let's try to do that on the other end of this one. I don't know if it's going to work or not. It may, it, but see, it knows that this particular object is a shell. So let's go back here to the surface and we're going to go put a circle on here and we're going to draw a circle that's 13 millimeters. And so there it is. And then we're going to go back to the design mode and let's just see if it lets us do this. And it did. Okay. So, what I tried before when I tried to, to deal with punching the shell through from the other end because I already had my diameter inside, it wouldn't allow me to push that through and make a hole. It would only keep extending the length of the shell. So, all right, so that's, that's two ways to do it. Now, the other thing that we have to do now is we have to provide a way to, well, you know what, do I have... Uh, no, okay. Uh, do I, what we need is we need a way to um, split this cylinder that will allow it to be clipped on to the leg of the tripod. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to go ahead and turn this image back on. And uh, we're going to tilt this up and we're going to create a plane and tilt it back up that way because we want, we want a, a plane that is uh, the right orientation. Okay. So, because we need, we need to be able to tip it upwards to get the right orientation to make the cuts that we need. So we're just going to do this. So now we have the plane is perpendicular to the display. And then we can pivot the plane to look at the ends of the cylinders. Now we're going to go back here. So there's, now we have our plane is straight across. And we know that this is the front of the cylinder. What we need to do is we need to clip the back of the cylinder. So the easiest way to do that uh, would be to draw lines from the center of the cylinder out to the radius at a particular angle. So, and we need, we need a little, we need more than 50%. We need a, just a little bit more. 
So maybe 60 degree angle on each side because we need to, we just need enough to, to get that thing to clip over the leg and, and keep it. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this surface, go to, go to, go to a, a sketch plane. And then now we have the, uh, we need a line and we have, and this may not be the easiest way to do this. This is just the way that I figured it out. So we have a line here from the center and we're going to go, here's our, our degrees. So if we say, uh, so there we have, uh, we know that that line, this line here is at 180 degrees. So we say 165. So that's a 15 degree line. And we go out there to there. Now we do the same thing on the other side for 15 degrees. So there's a 15 degree line. So now we have a, a way to draw something that we can use to cut through this cylinder. Okay. So that gives us this section here that we can separate. So if we go back here to design mode uh, and we do a pull on that and we have to subtract material. So we're going to go here, subtract, and then we're going to tip it up like that. And now we have, we pulled that away, and now we have uh, now we have this angle that we're dealing with that we can fit around the, the tubing. Now one of the things that it does to us is it creates other objects. So if we highlight that and say delete, we can get rid of it. All right. So now we have half a cylinder, basically. So we'll do the same thing over here on the other side. <coughs> and it looks like I tilted the cylinder a little bit. So let's see. Can we can we rotate it? Let's go back here and go back here. Just make sure that our plane is the right orientation. Oops. All right. So now we want this guy and we're going to put a plane on here. And we're going to do the same thing with the lines here. So we want a line from the center. We want a 15 degree line all the way out to the outer edge. And then we want a 165 degree line out to this edge. And that gives us our cutting tool. Go back here to D and uh, highlight that. Select that. Oops, come back here. Pull. Zoom in a little bit. It makes it easier to deal with. And then uh, we're going to tilt it up so we have a little bit of angle to work with cut through there and then we're going to highlight these guys and cut through there. Oop, come back here. Now, so now we have two Uh, cylinders, I'm sorry, with uh, cuts that will go around the pipe. Now to make it a little easier to fit around the pipe, while we're, while we're here, we're just going to go ahead and round these inside edges. 
and you can do both edges at the same time just push them in and make them a little rounded and so in this case we're going to say uh, go one millimeter and that gives you a little rounded edge and it gives us a little a little bit of an edge right here uh, to rest and so both of these are one millimeter and now we'll do the same thing to the other side And I guess I'll do both of these one at a time. No, okay. I guess I didn't. I don't know what I hit there for a second. So let's go back here to pull and go here and go here. Now we can do both of them at the same time. And, uh, one millimeter. All right, so now we have both of those set to one millimeter. Now we can turn off the, uh, the image again. We don't need that. And uh, let's see, what else do we have here that we don't need? We don't need that line. Well, well, we'll keep that line for now. And so we have two solid pieces. And then we, and now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the H for home key. And this is gonna operate from the back, I guess. Okay, so it, it thinks that that's the home view. And um, at this point, we can uh, deal with creating, uh, let's go ahead and uh, use this line as the plane. And then we'll tip it up. What did we, oh, there, we, okay. It, uh, so now we've got these uh, cylinders. I find it's easier to work through them with this way. And so now what we need to do is we need to uh, have something here in the middle to hold the eyeglasses. So I figured, well, let's make a triangular shape that uh, comes out from the edge of the uh, cylinders and uh, the eyeglasses will sit on it like a nose. Okay. So we said, okay, let's, let's make it like a triangular type shape. And so, um, there's an easy way and a hard way. So let's go to the easy way. The easy way is a polygon. And um, we want a sketch plane. So we're going to go here. Oops. I don't want to go there. I want to go here and make a sketch plane. So now we have sketch plane. All right. Now. And that's not quite where I want it, but that's all right. It'll, 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 that'll work. Now, so now what we want is we want, we have a polygon. We want a polygon. So we can, we can draw a polygon here. And now DesignSpark defaults to a five or six sided polygon. Real handy for drawing nuts. Um, but we, what we want is we want three. So, oops, uh, we went to the wrong thing. So here's the sides. We want three sides. So now we have a triangle and it just happens to be in the correct orientation. Um, and then we want to know how big is that, is that triangle? So let's say, let's say 30. Uh, let's see, we, we, we actually need uh, 10, 20, 35. So let's say 35 millimeters across. That's too big. Let's say 25. It didn't like that at all. I'm gonna go here. 
to the sketch plane. Have to be careful about where we are on the cylinder when we make a plane. So let's see. What's the easiest way to make a plane here? Easiest way is to use the image. So we're going to go here, going to go here, go back into design mode, click the image, hit the plane. So now we have the plane. Now we're on the front of the plane or the back of the plane? Okay, we're on the front of the plane. All right. So now we're squared up and I'm going to take this moment and pause the video. Okay. So now what we have to do is we have to figure out where to put this triangle. And so easiest way is a polygon. So we're going to go up here. We're going to put the polygon. Oh, that looks to be about the center right there. And so the first thing it's going to find out is, okay, what's the, what's the angle or the size or what the angle of the, uh, the uh, angles of the polygon are. So we don't like that. So we're going to delete that polygon. I'm going to start from here and you see down here, there's, I don't know why it's not giving us what we want here. Oops. Okay, so here, go to polygon, and we're going to go here, and you see there's the degrees of the angle from the center, and then there's the side. So we want, and I don't know why it's not giving us the sides that we want. Sides, okay, so now we want, oh, that's a new polygon, that's why. There we go, now. Have to keep the mouse button clicked. Three sides. And then we want, uh, the angle. So in this case, it says 105. We want 90, I believe. So there's 90. And then we want a size. So in this case, it's 10. So let's say 25. And 25 is almost going to be right. Um, so let's say, thirty. And thirty is going to be pretty good. All right. Because we're gonna we're gonna do a few a few things here to uh, make it make it better. And now we want to be able to move this triangle down a little bit. So we're going to say select it. Oops. Did we not get our triangle? Try again. Three. Ninety. And I don't know why I just got a box here for, and I'm going to say, let's say 28. That'll work better. So we got that, we got that. And now I'm going to click there. And there's our triangle. So we're going to select that. I'm going to say move it. 
and we're going to tip it back up. And then we're going to pull it down. Pull it over. Okay. That's the image. We don't want that. Select. And we want to move that just a hair. Okay. Now, let's go back into design mode. Now we have a triangle that we can use. And we're gonna turn off the image to get rid of that. So now we have our triangle. And we can use this triangle. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna chop off the top of the triangle. So we're gonna do that with the line and we're going to draw a line here from one place to the other. All right, so that, that gets rid of that top part. So we'll go back into the design mode. And so now we have a triangle that we can kill. So we're going to go back here to the pull mode, pull it up, push it back, now it's gone. All right, now this gives us a, a bit of a flat plane, place to to uh, use for our uh, for our uh, glasses to sit on so whoops I didn't want to do that yet so this gives us here and then we're going to pull this out a little bit to give us a little bit of space and then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make this surface here, we're going to bring that up to, up to that surface right there. All right. So that brings us like that. Now, I, I made this a little long because, of course, you have the temples and the eyeglass frames and what have you to, to deal with. But let's see how long it is. So if we go here, hold down the control key, go here. That's 14. Nope, that's the angle. We don't want the angle. We want the measurement. So we so with the minimum distance is 58. That's way too far. So let's, let's make that 30. So right now it's 58. So we're, we're going to go ahead and push this back. Uh, by 18. 18. Doesn't have to be exact, just enough. So now we have a place that our glasses can rest on. And now we're going to round up some corners. Uh, and so uh, let's pull this over here. And we're just going to do this. And we're going to say we want to round the corners. And round the corners, and we'll say 2.5. So there's that. And then we'll go here to this side, triple click, highlight all the corners and push them, whoop, we don't want that. We, we, so we want this edge and this edge and this edge. And 
and we want rounded corners. I don't know why it's stuck in giving me. So let's try this here and here we want 2.5 and then here, here and here and here we want 2.5. So now we have all of our edges rounded, and then we want these bottom edges rounded. So we're gonna say here, and here, 2.5. Didn't like that, one millimeter. All right, so now it just takes a little edge off it. So now, there is our uh, tripod eyeglass holder. Not, I mean, it's not beautiful, it's not pretty, but it'll work, it'll print, everything will be fine. Just got to do a little bit of cleanup here inside the cylinder. So like, for example, this edge here, we want to pull that. And we're gonna, we want to say up to And so we want to make sure that we have the cylinder here. Nothing is poking into the cylinder. Same thing on the other side. So we'll say here, take this edge. All right, so now we don't have anything. Uh, we don't have anything poking into the uh, into the cylinders that will keep it from snapping in. So now we can just rotate it back around and save the file, export it out to an STL, send it to the printer. Uh, that's about it. I mean, the, the the key point is you can use an image to do this kind of stuff, and so. Uh, very cool stuff for Design Spark. Uh, I'm by no means an expert. I'm learning this stuff just like everybody else. And so uh, just give me some ideas to, to create something and I'll just jump in here and start creating. Anyhow, thanks for watching. I know it's, it's been a little long, um, but sometimes you have to take a little long to get to the detail. My name is Ben Brady. I am the 3D Printing Texan. Thank you for watching and Hit the subscribe button. Thank you.